procedure for putting on and removing Level D protection. Occasionally, law enforcement or other first responders may be required to operate in high-risk environments, requiring them to wear a combination of personal protective equipment which provides full body and respiratory protection. There are four standard combinations of personal protective equipment, or PPE, referred to as Level A, Level B, Level C and Level D protection. In this video, we'll look at the procedure for putting on Level D protection, as well as the procedure for its correct removal using a method called dry decontamination. Variations of Level D protection are routinely used for processing of crime scenes and evidence collection. Generally, it is suited to lower exposure risk environments where the only hazards present are non-chemical solid particulates and some biological hazards. You should always check that the PPE being used is certified for the hazards which are likely to be encountered. Level D protection should never be used in environments where there is a risk of ignition or explosion. Ideally, officers should have some training in the correct use of this PPE. Level D will normally consist of a particulate tight or splash-resistant coverall and some form of respiratory and eye protection. This may be an N95 or P2 particulate mask in conjunction with safety glasses or goggles. Level D will also include gloves and foot protection, generally determined by the hazards present or the role being performed. Coveralls should be certified to a minimum of Category 3 and depending on the hazards present, either Type 5 for solid particulates or Type 6 for liquid chemicals. Carefully select the correct size of chemical-resistant coverall and check the expiry date. If the suit is too small, it can rip, split or not allow you to have free or functional movement. It's better to be one size too big than too small. The PPE should always be put on in a clean environment. Putting on the suit is easier if you can sit down. Remove any footwear and tuck any long pants into your socks. Put the suit on starting with the leg. Put on the disposable overboots or whichever type of protective footwear is appropriate for the environment in which you'll be working. Pull the legs of the suit down over the top of the overboots or any boot type footwear being worn. At level D, it is not always necessary to tape boots to the suit. However, if required, this can be done now. Whenever taping boots or other PPE to the coveralls, make a tab by folding the end of the tape over on itself. This will help to remove the tape later during decontamination. Put on a pair of nitrile gloves. These will be referred to as your inner gloves. Insert your arms through the sleeves, lifting the suit up over your shoulders. Inner gloves can be taped to the suit at this point if required. This is particularly recommended if you'll be using double gloves in the work or crime scene environment. At this point, it is also recommended to put on your respiratory protection. Hold the mask in one hand with the elastic straps over the back of the hand and place the mask in position over the nose and mouth. Lift the lower elastic strap over the head and position it roughly below the ear. Lift the top elastic strap over the head and position it at the upper rear of the head and adjust for comfort. Pinch or press the metal nose clip around your nose so it forms to the shape of the nose bridge to achieve a secure seal. Use both hands to check that the mask is securely fitted around the shape of your face and there are no gaps. Then put on your eye protection, making sure it does not interfere with the mask seal. Using your hands, check the front and sides of the eye protection to make sure it is tightly fitted to your face and there are no significant gaps. Once your respiratory and eye protection or APR is on, pull the hood of the suit over your head. Tape down the front flap over the zip. If you intend to use double gloves or wear an outer glove, you can put on your second pair of gloves at this point. Finally, the assistant should perform a buddy check, making sure that all items of PPE are fitted correctly and the suit is sealed with no splits or tears. You are now ready to enter the hazard or work environment. Procedure for removing Level D protection. When you have been operating in a contaminated environment, the external surfaces of all PPE items worn or used must be treated as contaminated. 
Regardless of the potential contaminant, the risk of exposure, cross-contamination or infection is increased significantly if the PPE is not removed correctly. There are different decontamination processes which can be used depending on available resources and the type of threat or contaminant present. In this video, we will demonstrate a method called dry decontamination or simply dry decon. Dry decon, as with any decontamination, requires the assistance of another officer, normally designated as the decon officer, who should also be wearing the correct level of PPE for the hazard present. The objective of the dry decon method is to ensure that as the PPE is removed, your body or hands do not make contact with the outside surface of the PPE. To remove the PPE, stand in a designated decon area or inside a decon bag placed on the ground. You should start by removing the outer gloves. Remove the tape from the inner gloves and suit. Open the front flap and unzip. The decon officer should then remove the hood from your head, turning it inside out as they remove it and roll it downward. Remember no part of your body should touch the outside of the suit and the decon officer should only have minimal contact as they start to roll the suit down and away from your body. The decon officer should roll the suit over your shoulders again, turning it inside out as they roll it down. At this point, they should hold each sleeve and you should pull your hand and arm into your suit, crossing your arms over your chest and keep them in this position. Once the suit is down below the knees, sit down on a clean surface. The decon officer may now remove the tape from the overboots. When using disposable coveralls and overboots, it's often easier to use trauma shears to cut or rip away the legs and overboots. Eye protection can now be removed, followed by the respiratory protection. It should be noted that aside from the inner nitrile gloves, respiratory protection should almost always be the last item of PPE removed. Finally, your inner nitrile gloves can be removed. Once all PPE has been removed, you should always wash your face and hands before drinking or eating. 